The Office of the Prosecutor completed its case against Thomas Labangadilo this week. This first trial in the history of the court started on the 26th of January 2009 before Trial Chamber 1 of the International Criminal Court. Trial Chamber 1 is composed of Judges Adrian Fulford, Presiding Judge, Judge Elizabeth Odio Benito and Judge René Blatman. Thomas Labangadilo, the first person to have been surrendered to the court since its inception, is accused of having committed as co-perpetrator war crimes consisting of enlisting and conscripting children under the age of 15 years into the Force Patriotique pour la Libération de Congo, Patriotic Forces for the Liberation of Congo, the FPLC, and using them to participate actively in hostilities in Ituri, a district of the eastern province of the Democratic Republic of the Congo between September 2002 and August 2003. During the hearings, the Office of the Prosecutor called 28 witnesses, including eight child soldiers and three experts. Two experts were called by the Chamber. The proceedings lasted 74 days over a period of 22 trial weeks. The Office of the Prosecutor presented all the evidence at its disposal, submitting to the attention of the judges a large number of documents compiled for the case, as well as videos allegedly showing Mr Labanga in training camps in the company of recruits whose age seems to be below 15. Deputy Prosecutor Fatou Ben Sauda, who is the lead counsel in this case, gave a summary of the OTP's case. In the prosecution's case, we have called uh, witnesses who have uh, come to testify about the um, structure, about uh, the uh, poli policy of recruitment of children, um, about how children were used, how children were tortured, and uh, how children were subjected to rape in the camps. And uh, these kind of these witnesses have been, uh, some of them have been insiders, military as well as political insiders. Some of them have been experts. Some of them have been child soldiers themselves and uh, um, various other witnesses who have uh, given this testimony, you know, which I believe has been very compelling before the, the, the court, the chamber. The progress of the prosecution's case, uh, in my assessment, has been very um, efficiently managed by the chamber. And uh, um, of course, we assess that we have presented very good evidence, but the decision, of course, will, will remain with the judges to decide. And this will only come after the defense case, which is estimated to start in uh, September or October of this year. They will also be leading witnesses, and we will have uh, opportunity to also cross-examine those, those witnesses. There have been challenges, of course. It has not been all, uh, um, you know, uh, rosy. We've had challenges, and, but we've learned from those challenges. Um, for example, we've learned to be more protective of vulnerable witnesses um, because sometimes th some of these witnesses come from uh, situation countries that tensions are still high and it is absolutely necessary that we make sure that uh, these, these witnesses are um, protected. And uh, where it has been possible, we have uh, given our recommendation to the chamber and we have worked very closely with the VWU, you know, who have also been doing uh, good work in bringing the witnesses and we um, interviewing them in court. And also um, the chamber, I think, has also done a great job in ensuring that uh, the protection of witnesses is adequate for, for them. So I think all in all, um, even though we, fa we will face these challenges, we've learned from them. And I think it will only improve as, as we, we go on. Maybe another challenge has been, you know, the outreach. You know, um, uh, we have had good witnesses who have come, very courageous witnesses who have come to, uh, to te te testify. And, um, we, but we need to make sure that the stories that they have also told us, you know, is, is out there. And I think together with the registry, and uh, other, other parties, we are, we're trying to make sure that um, the justice that is being done here is uh, translated as well into, into the field and people know and understand and are aware of, of what we are doing. In fact, as we speak, the prosecutor is in Bunya, you know, and uh, meeting with local communities and explaining so far what we have done, 
and what we are trying to do and what we are trying to achieve. And we hope that this is going to be an opportunity to uh, make the communities um, come together, reconcile, you know, and, and, and speak to each other and be together. And that it will be a way, this trial will be a way of bringing peace, security and stability to these communities. The trial against Thomas Labangadilo is the first trial in the history of international law to enable victims to participate fully in the proceedings. In total, the judges have recognised 95 persons as victims for the purpose of participating in the case, and the interests of these persons are defended by eight legal representatives. Paulina Masida, head of the Office of the Public Council for Victims and legal representative in this case, gave us the viewpoint of the victims about the case so far. Les victimes qui ont participé au procès contre Monsieur Lubanga. The victims who are participating in the trial against Thomas Lubanga Dilio consider that the prosecutor has recently presented evidence that shows that Thomas Lubanga was enlisting children, training them in the military camps, and using them to actively participate in hostilities, especially in the Ituri region. We believe that the evidence shows inhumane and degrading conditions in which the children were living in the camps, where children were deprived of sleep and food and where they witnessed the executions of their friends who did not follow orders or try to run away. They received difficult orders and had to follow very severe discipline. We also believe that there is a significant amount of evidence showing that girls who were enlisted in the army did not only receive military training but also became sexual slaves of the camps and other commanders. Based on the evidence presented by the Office of the Prosecutor, the legal representatives of the victims submitted in May a request of the Chamber to consider changing the legal characterization of facts in the document containing charges against Thomas Lubango Dilio. In particular, the legal representatives of the victims proposed to the Chamber to decide if these acts could be qualified as inhumane and degrading treatment, as sexual violence, or sexual slavery. Very recently, on 14 July, trial chamber decided that indeed there was a possibility of a new legal characterization of the facts and that after court recess, the chamber will decide on the process to follow to decide whether the charges will be changed or not. We are very satisfied because this decision supported the thesis that we proposed. The decision was taken by a majority of the judges, with dissenting opinion of the presiding judge on the issue not yet public. But more generally, this is the first time that victims can participate in the proceedings. They have a voice. We are satisfied that there is already a decision by the trial chamber to allow three victims to present their stories and preoccupations directly in front of the court after the recess, probably in October. Thomas Labangadilo is represented by Catherine Mabi, lead counsel for the defence and co-counsels Marc Desselier and Jean-Marie Bijou Duval. Unfortunately, the counsel for the defence are not available for filming due to preparations underway for the defence case outside of the seat of the court. During the prosecution's case, the defence has the opportunity to cross-examine the witnesses of the prosecution. When the defence team starts its case beginning in October, they will present exculpatory evidence in its possession and call a number of witnesses. The case for the defence is expected to last several months. At the end of the hearings, the judges of Trial Chamber 1 will give their decision within a reasonable period of time. This decision will be pronounced in public. It will acquit or condemn the accused. The various parties to the trial will, if need be, be able to appeal the decision before the appeals chamber of the court. Thank <laughs> you.